Good day, friends. Thank you for again coming back to my uh, uh, channel on my, with my reflections. This, uh, this week I want to look at uh, the lectionary reading from Romans chapter 8. Just a couple verses in it. And here's starting with verse, chapter 8, verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption when we cry, Abba, Father. This is Paul's writing to the church in Rome. The church in Rome is, uh, he's writing to the Christian, the Gentile followers of Jesus in Rome, who are with some Jewish uh, followers of the way, followers of Jesus, uh, on the edge of the synagogue and feeling hard whether they fit in or not. At this point in the history of the church, we're only, you know, 15, 20 years into the church history, um, Paul is, Paul's theology and where Paul's going is that the followers of Jesus, the Christians, the people of the way, are actually um, an extension of the Jewish faith and the children of Abraham, the people of God. So this is why in this passage, Paul speaks of the spirit that we are given enables us to make the claim of adoption into the family of God. The us in this case is the Gentiles. Most of us to be true, to be truthful. And what Paul says is, it's not a spirit of slavery where we're back into the world of fear that we experience but a spirit of adoption. It's a very powerful message. And what, I, what stands out for me, the one piece is the last piece of that verse 15, where it says, when we cry, it's not an intellectual understanding. It's a heartfelt, it's an inner self, it's a true self understanding, that you understand fully that here you belong. Here you're part of the family. It's been hard these last 15 months when we've been trying to do church and be family, uh, be connected and community uh, on this online world. Few of us gathering to lead worship, um, but most of us at our homes. We've lost that piece of, of physical presence with one another. Perhaps then it's even more important to understand that what binds us together, what makes us family, is not the physical presence, but the spirit, the spirit within us, the spirit that we've been given. And this spirit isn't intended to bind us in a manner of limiting us who we can be connected with or who we are. It's not a spirit of slavery that implies that we must do this and we must do that and we must do this. The spirit of authority and rules. It's a spirit of adoption where we're brought in, included, if I may share a, share a story we heard today in our Bible study without naming names, one person spoke of uh, coming to the church the first time after many years, and uh, as she was signing the um, guest book, someone came over and said, oh, you're new here, come and sit with us. We were, she told, shared the story in the context of us talking about when you felt the presence of God presence of the Spirit. What a powerful story of what it means when we say the spirit of adoption. You come to a place, you say, come sit with me, you belong. I want you to be here. Come be part of the family. You're included. This is the spirit of adoption. We spoke this morning about how uh, we are called to actually be uh, the voice of God for someone else. We never know when it is going to be, and we never know when some simple little thing we do isn't gonna be a powerful expression for someone else of, of the presence of the divine, of the invitation of God, of the spirit coming within them so that they can cry, Abba, Father. Cry that idea that you have a claim to the place. 
as a child of the family. Or as Paul says later, heirs, heirs to the heritage uh, of the family, the kingdom of God. This idea that we receive the spirit of Jesus or the spirit of God and through that we're able to claim a place in the family. This idea is the core part of Paul's gospel, the gospel according to Paul, that is throughout the New Testament. The gospels, uh, Mark, Luke, Matthew, John, are telling it in a different way. In Mark particularly and in Luke particularly, we see how uh, they gather community, collected. Look, and, and when we get to Acts, we see that there's 140 of them waiting for the Holy Spirit to come, which we read and celebrated last week in the upper room. So we know, in fact, this is Luke's idea, and he's demonstrating it with the stories. Paul expresses it this way. You're adopted not only into the new family being created, but into the historical family of God in the promise of Abraham. So here we are, friends, at a time when we've gone 15 months where maybe we felt disconnected from our church family, from our faith family. But it's not this, it's not the physical presence that counts. Yes, when we're physically present with one another, we have a clearer and quicker sense of community and gathering. But the true sense of the community, the true sense of the gathering, the true sense of family and belonging is something that's within us. That the spirit within us allows us or maybe helps us break open our hesitation so that we can cry out, Abba Father, cry out our, our joy and our love and, and our feeling of acceptance. Cry out because of all the hurt and all the rejection, and all the left outness, <laughs> all the disconnection that is washed away when the Spirit touches us in a way that lets us know truly in our heart that we have a place in the family of God, a place amongst the people of God. Let it be so, and let the physical, be, being in each other's physical presence come soon, and may the Spirit of God be in the midst of that moment and all our moments so that we can cry out with hearts full of joy that we belong. Blessings, friends. Till next time.